What if Anakin Skywalker captured Obi-Wan on Mustafar? That's our story for today. Hope you guys enjoy this one, I really like it quite a bit. And of course, check the pinned comment down below for the 60,000 subscriber lightsaber giveaway. Thanks everyone, and let's get right into the story. Our story begins on Mustafar, as Anakin is arguing with Padme about where their lives should go from here. Anakin wants Padme by his side as they rule their new empire. They can make things the way they want them to be, but Padme does not recognize Anakin anymore. She wants to just run away with him, leave everything behind, raise their family together. Anakin just doesn't understand why she won't rule with him, but then he sees Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan Kenobi standing atop the ramp of Padme's ship. Anakin could not believe Padme would betray him like this, and so he begins choking her through his rage. Obi-Wan begins moving down the ramp, demands that Anakin puts her down, and so Anakin drops her before turning to face his former master. Anakin asked Obi-Wan if he has come here to kill him, and in the moment, Obi-Wan decided to try a different path, a path that perhaps no one else has tried yet, mercy. Obi-Wan told Anakin that no, he is not here to kill him. Instead, he asked Anakin to see his mistakes, help him destroy the Emperor. This made Anakin angry, and he told Obi-Wan that if he does not fight, then he will be destroyed. Obi-Wan simply said, so be it, and he closed his eyes, waiting for Anakin to strike him down. Anakin ignited his saber, moving in with purpose, and he lifted it to swing at Obi-Wan. He swung down, but his saber stopped. Anakin couldn't explain it, but he just couldn't move his saber the final inch to kill Obi-Wan. He screamed out, trying to do it, but it's like his arms just wouldn't move. He saw Obi-Wan faintly smile, and this made Anakin just even more angry, so he spun his saber, slamming the hilt into Obi-Wan's head, knocking him out as he tumbled to the ground. And Anakin decided that Obi-Wan would be a valuable prisoner to the Empire. He must know where other surviving Jedi are hiding. Anakin realized that is why he couldn't kill Obi-Wan, it's because he is needed as a prisoner, and Anakin was content loading both Obi-Wan and Padme onto the ship, both unconscious, taking off for Coruscant. Anakin would sit in the pilot seat, and he remembered another time that he was in a Naboo ship like this. He was with Padme, as they took off for Geonosis to save Obi-Wan, and now he was bringing both of them to Coruscant as enemies. Elsewhere in the galaxy, Yoda has reunited with Bail Organa after losing his fight to Sidious. Both of them survived, but Yoda knew he could not win. And they were getting no word from Obi-Wan. Every minute that went by, it seemed more likely that he was killed on Mustafar. Yoda could only wonder how it happened, but with Anakin still alive and Obi-Wan gone, he decided that he must try to find another Jedi. Had Obi-Wan defeated Anakin and brought back Anakin's children, then perhaps he could go into immediate exile until the children were ready to be trained. But for now, Yoda assumed that he was the last hope, and he began searching for survivors. On Coruscant, Emperor Palpatine was in his office as the doors swung open. He was eagerly awaiting Anakin's return, and he entered the office with Obi-Wan in restraints around his wrists, neck, and ankles, while being escorted by six royal guards. Palpatine raised his eyebrows, asking Anakin why he was still alive. And Anakin said that Kenobi can provide valuable information on other surviving Jedi. Palpatine told Anakin that the survivors do not matter. The Jedi Order is broken, dead, and any survivor will go into hiding like a coward. The Jedi are not a threat. And he curled his fingers, blasting Obi-Wan with lightning. The Jedi Master crumpled to the ground and yelled out in pain as the lightning was burning into him. Anakin could only watch. He'd convinced himself that this is what Obi-Wan deserved. He was a Jedi, and the Jedi were traitors. But Obi-Wan called out for Anakin, asking for help. Palpatine stopped his lightning, then said that Anakin is dead. Only Vader remains. Obi-Wan could barely move, and with a laugh, Palpatine ordered that he be taken into the prison cell, deep inside the executive building. The death of Obi-Wan Kenobi will be a public one, to show the galaxy how weak the Jedi truly are. And so Obi-Wan was dragged away by the guards. Anakin watched him go, then knelt down in front of his new master. Sidious circled Anakin, saying that he feels conflict in him. Anakin said that he has killed the light inside of him. Any remaining conflict will be gone soon, once Padme gives a safe birth. Palpatine asked where she is now, to which Anakin told him that she is in the Coruscant Medical Facility. And so Palpatine and Anakin would go together to be with her as she went into labor. 
Deep in the mid-rim of the galaxy, Grandmaster Yoda was taking a great risk. He infiltrated the former Jedi Temple in the Holy City on Jeddah, making his way through it down to the Meditation Chambers. He learned that this temple was set for Imperial Excavation, but that time has not yet come, so Yoda was able to safely make his way inside. Many of the Jedi Temples across the galaxy were connected through the Force, so if Yoda was able to connect with the Force here, then he could connect with any Jedi in any other temple throughout the galaxy, so long as they are looking for someone. Yoda would get into meditation, and he'd sit here for hours, waiting, hoping another Jedi survived and was brave enough to go to a temple. He would be looking for others, anyone, and Bail Organa was waiting on top of this temple, his ship hidden well enough, as Yoda searched on and on, beginning to lose hope, until finally he felt someone else. It was a girl, and Yoda heard her call, Ahsoka. Yoda and Ahsoka connected through the Force, and Yoda asked Ahsoka to meet her above Dagobah. Ahsoka was hesitant, she didn't want to fight anymore, but Yoda would tell her about Anakin, and Ahsoka was convinced. She thought that she could bring Anakin back. The meeting was set, and both Jedi escaped their temples before the Empire ever had a chance to catch them. And now, back on Coruscant, Padme Amidala was deep in labor, with Palpatine and Anakin close by. Anakin was asking Palpatine for advice on how to save her, but the medical doctors and droids kept telling Anakin she was in perfect health. This gave Anakin some relief, but he knew Padme better than anyone. He could feel through the force that she was dying. Anakin was by her side as she did give birth to not only a boy, but a girl as well. They had twins, Luke and Leia. Anakin was smiling down at Padme, saying that she is alright, but Padme looked up at Anakin with a broken heart. She noticed that Anakin's eyes were much darker than usual, devoid of any light or joy. Behind him stood Palpatine and his royal guard, Anakin's new ruler. Outside of the window, Padme could even see what remained of the Jedi Temple, and the Imperial banners were being draped over it. The sky was cloudy, rain was pouring down on Coruscant. Padme knew she has failed. The Republic, the Jedi, the ideas of peace, justice, and freedom were gone, all because of her husband. Padme's heart was broken beyond repair as she looked up to a nearby holonet screen as the headline read, Jedi Traitor Obi-Wan Kenobi set for public execution, and it was all too much for her. She looked up at Anakin, and with her final words, she asked Anakin to turn back to the light, and she fell dead. Anakin scrambled to hold her up, screaming out, asking out what was going on. The doctor said that they couldn't explain it, she was in fine health, but her heart has stopped. Anakin put his hand on her heart, trying to use any sort of force heal, but it wasn't working. That was a light side power. The dark side takes light, does not heal it. And Anakin saw now that he was a fool. The dark side, as Yoda said, leads only to suffering. The children were escorted away as Anakin clenched his fists. The glass in the room shattered, medical equipment flew around the room, and Anakin screamed out, asking what he has done. Palpatine ordered everyone to leave, so now he was alone with Anakin, and he told his young apprentice to remember his place. He has brought peace to the galaxy by wiping out the Jedi, and Padme was far too friendly to the Jedi. Had she survived, she would have worked tirelessly to defeat the Empire, but now they have the children of Skywalker, and they can be trained to carry the legacy of the Sith. Anakin wiped away his tears, feeling his lightsaber on his belt. Part of him wanted to kill Sidious where he stood, but Sidious was all he had left. Everyone else was gone, Anakin realized, and Palpatine told Anakin to rise, then ordered his apprentice to go with his guards, secure Kenobi, bring him to the top of the Imperial Palace. And now Anakin remembered that Obi-Wan was alive, and Anakin knew that once Kenobi is dead, only then will Darth Vader truly rise. Padme is dead, Ahsoka is dead, Anakin has lost it all, so Vader must truly replace him. Above Dagobah, Ahsoka was waiting in a small ship that she stole when the Tantive IV emerged from hyperspace. Ahsoka connected her ship and moved aboard the Tantive IV to find Yoda waiting for her. She took a seat across him, and Yoda told her everything that has happened. Palpatine revealed himself to Anakin, and when the time came, Anakin chose Palpatine over the Jedi. Ahsoka couldn't believe it, but Yoda said that he stormed the temple with the 501st, wiping out the Jedi, including the children. 
and now they have learned that he will be executing Obi-Wan Kenobi on Coruscant. Ahsoka said that they must go to Coruscant, save Obi-Wan, convince Anakin to fight the Sith. But Yoda was adamant that Anakin is completely gone. Ahsoka simply refused to believe this. The two of them would ultimately decide that they would need to go to Coruscant, find a way to save Obi-Wan, though Yoda did not believe Anakin would be helping them. In the prison cell on Coruscant, Obi-Wan was in a ray shield that had a burst of electricity every 10 minutes in order to keep Obi-Wan weak but alive. He was clinging to life and to the light side itself as Anakin entered with Palpatine's guards, saying that they were moving him to be executed. As Anakin stepped up to remove Obi-Wan's restraints, Obi-Wan could feel that Anakin was in deep agony, but hiding it through the dark side. So Obi-Wan asked how Padme was doing, and Anakin closed his eyes. Now Obi-Wan saw an opportunity, as he asked Anakin to see the truth. The Sith provide empty promises of power, and he asked Anakin if he truly believes that Palpatine will share his power with him after the Jedi are gone. Obi-Wan urged Anakin to remember that he is a Jedi. Anakin didn't speak, as Obi-Wan was dropped to the ground. He looked up one more time, telling Anakin that Palpatine's empire is pure madness and that Anakin will not survive it. Now Anakin looked down at Kenobi, telling him that he will save himself. And as the royal guards grabbed Obi-Wan, placing him in wrist, neck, and ankle restraints again, Obi-Wan asked Anakin a simple question. Is there anything left of you to be saved? And as Obi-Wan was guided away, Anakin heard this, considered it, looked down to his hand, to his lightsaber, and the question still rang in his head. What have I done? Atop a platform in front of every citizen of the Empire, whether they are watching in person or via the Holonet broadcast, everyone saw the famous Obi-Wan Kenobi placed inside of a ray shield prison as Masameda stepped out, addressing the galaxy, welcoming them to their new empire, finally free of the tyranny of the Jedi. Cheers would ring out from the citizens as Ma said that today will truly be a symbol for years to come of the peace of, that the empire will provide. No Jedi will be safe from them. The spotlight was now shining on Obi-Wan as the citizens were booing, screaming at him. Palpatine has truly convinced the galaxy that it is the Jedi who are evil. And Masameda said that the person doing this execution will be former Jedi, now savior of the Emperor, Anakin Skywalker. The main reason that Palpatine decided to do this publicly was so that the galaxy could be reintroduced to Anakin, the new face of the Empire. Palpatine hoped the galaxy would unite behind him, and Anakin stepped out of the shadows as Moss told everyone about how Anakin saved Palpatine from the attack by the Jedi Council. Cheers rang out for Skywalker as he readied himself, but suddenly, from the middle of the crowd, a loud boom was heard. The citizens cleared out as everyone was now looking at a small, hooded being as he ignited a green lightsaber. He slammed his fist into the ground, creating this boom, and it was Grand Master Yoda, demanding that Obi-Wan be let go immediately. This, of course, was merely a distraction, as the Royal Guards and Clone Security all turned their attention to Yoda. This gave Ahsoka the chance she needed, as she ascended a nearby wall, saw Obi-Wan, looked to him, then jumped from the far wall, lightsaber ignited. She was going to free him, and together, they could help Anakin. But right as Ahsoka was about to land and free Obi-Wan, lightning was slammed into her. She slid hard across the floor, coming to a stop right in front of Anakin. The lightning continued pouring into her as Palpatine emerged from the shadows, increasing his power, now telling the galaxy to remain calm. The Jedi are back, once again trying to thwart his plans, but as always, they fail. Now Yoda was surrounded by countless troopers as Ahsoka was being burned by the lightning. Obi-Wan was stuck, but he closed his eyes, reaching out once more to Anakin. Palpatine slammed Ahsoka into a wall now, then he ignited a red blade, declaring to the galaxy that the Sith Empire will reign forever, and he moved in at Obi-Wan, stabbing forward to kill him himself. But as Anakin saw what the galaxy has become, he flipped forward, igniting his lightsaber in the air, landing right in front of Obi-Wan. Sidious plunged his saber into Anakin now, while Anakin plunged his own saber into Palpatine. Palpatine was completely shocked by this. They locked eyes, and the life faded from Palpatine as he was in complete shock. Couldn't believe it, his apprentice betrayed him. Anakin looked past him now, 
to see Ahsoka standing back up, and behind her, Anakin saw Padme and his mother. It was all in his head, but it gave Anakin peace. He used his last bit of strength to free Obi-Wan, and then he fell backwards. Obi-Wan caught Anakin as Anakin thanked him before he died in Kenobi's arms. The entire galaxy was stunned. No one moved as all of this happened within 30 seconds. The Emperor was dead, Skywalker killed him, and now was dead as well. The Jedi were free, and almost at once, anger erupted as the clones began firing at Yoda. He blocked all of the shots, jumping around, getting to the stage where Ahsoka and Obi-Wan were waiting. Lightsabers ignited, blocking every shot that came at them. They looked to the sky as three clone fighters flew at them now, firing down at the stage. The Jedi dove away, deflecting a few shots, but suddenly, the fighters were blown from the sky as the Tantive Four flew into view, flying above the three Jedi as they jumped to the open ramp. The Tantive Four weaved through Coruscant, coming to a stop next to the Imperial Medical Facility, as Obi-Wan and Ahsoka grabbed the Skywalker children, and the Tantive Four flew to space, jumping to hyperspace, just as more Imperial fighters were catching up to them. With the Emperor dead, the Empire would have to move on quickly out of fear of the galaxy falling apart. There were crime organizations led by Maul that were beginning to rise up. They needed a strong leader, but seeing Palpatine use his lightsaber and lightning gave the Empire fear. So they would choose someone strong, but also compassionate. Emperor Mon Mothma. She would take this empire, treat it as a republic, using the clone armies to rid the galaxy of Maul and his crime empire uniting the galaxy to rebuild this broken system for the people in need across the galaxy. The legacy of Palpatine would go on to be one of war and political overreach, as the galaxy was able to soon see just how corrupt he truly was. Many senators would be arrested for conspiring with this corruption, and the galaxy would begin to be reformed, as Mon Mothma would slowly, over time, take this from being an empire back to a republic, hoping to bring the system back from the depths it was in. As for the Jedi, they would hide in the mountains and forests of Alderaan, home of Bail Organa. There was not a hunt for Jedi going on any longer, but Jedi were also not exactly welcomed into the galaxy. They would spread throughout the galaxy the Outer Rim where the Empire, New Republic, was not reaching. This was fine to them, as Yoda, Obi-Wan, Ahsoka, and others that would find their way here would find peace in this new era, helping the people of the galaxy rather than the Senate. And in time, Luke and Leia would be trained, becoming leaders of the newest generation of Jedi Knights, as Yoda would soon pass away, giving an opportunity for Obi-Wan Kenobi to become the new Grand Master, with Ahsoka by his side. She re-entered the Order after everything that happened, after the Jedi were separated from the Empire, from the Republic itself. She decided that with them helping the people, she would rejoin, join on Obi-Wan's side, help him train Luke and Leia, and rebuild the Jedi Order. And folks, that is where our story ends today. The main inspiration for this kind of came from, I was watching War of the Planet of the Apes. This is a spoiler warning, if you don't want to be spoiled for War of the Planet of the Apes, or skip 20 seconds or just get out of here. Anyways, when uh, Caesar is up on the restraints and a donkey comes up to him and is like, I'm gonna save my not I'm gonna save myself and Caesar's like, is there anything left of you to save? I was like, that's a hard line. I'm using that in whatever I write next. And I was like, yeah, we're doing this with Anakin Obi-Wan. And I think it went well. Um I love I always kind of base my stories around one key moment, whether that one key moment comes in the beginning, middle, or the end. Like last um last story I really wanted to do a pod race. And I was like, how can I make this happen in the Clone Wars era? So I did that. This one was all about how can I have Anakin and Obi-Wan basically share that moment where Obi-Wan is like, is there even anything left of you to save? So that's what we went through today. I've never actually come up with my own original content. That's a joke. I'm joking. I'm joking. I No. I get inspiration from a lot of things and just kind of try to use that, tie it into Star Wars, which I think is very fun, very cool. Yeah. Apes. Gotta love a smart ape. Anyways, the rest of the story, Padme dying. I really liked writing that scene with her looking around at just the destruction and the tyranny and the sadness and the horribleness of the Empire. Just being like, oh my god, my husband did this and now he wants me to rule the galaxy with him. I don't think so. Dies. Uh, yeah, that was fun. Could have done a bit more with the clones. I could have maybe introduced Rex, but we've done a lot of Rex recently. 
decided to just keep this to Ahsoka and Yoda. Haven't done much Ahsoka at all recently, so decided to do that. Anyways, uh, yeah, Anakin coming back. Maybe a little predictable, but I wanted to drag it out a few scenes. There was a few scenes you could have done it, and I did it at the end. So, hope you enjoyed today's video, and see you in the next video.